and in our relationship with Jesus Christ. We've been called to be disciples of Jesus Christ. But we've also been called to go into the world and to make disciples. The scripture today is the most famous scripture in all the Bible that relates to this. This story takes place after the resurrection, so we're kind of getting ahead of ourselves here in the uh, Holy Week schedule, but this story takes place after the resurrection. <coughs> Jesus had told the women to tell the disciples that he would meet them in the Galilee. And so the disciples go back to the Galilee. And there they meet Jesus. And it says, Jesus came and he says to them, All authority in heaven and on earth has been given to me. Now you, you go and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them, teaching them. And remember, I am with you always to the end of the age. This scripture is referred to as the Great Commission that Jesus gave to the church, to his movement, to go out into the world. And following this commission, over the coming years, the disciples went out. And we don't know where most of them even went. The stories of those 12 and the many other disciples who followed Jesus are buried in history. Oh, we know of Peter. We know of Andrew. We know of some of the disciples. And there are traditions that others went to India and into Africa and other places. But what we can be certain of is that they took that Great Commission seriously. Because within one generation, the gospel had spread throughout the world as the disciples knew it at that time, throughout the Roman Empire, all the way to Rome, which was the heart of the empire, as we follow Paul through the book of Acts. And within a few hundred years, the Christian faith had come to dominate the world. It's an amazing story. The disciples went, and they made disciples of others. Today I want to talk about us, what it means to go and make disciples. Jesus said, go into all the world and make disciples in my name. I want to break this into two parts. The first is, what does it mean to make disciples? And the second is, where is the world that God has called us to? So let's begin by looking at what it means to make disciples. How exactly is this done? Is there a manual someplace that teaches us step by step how to go out and make disciples? Just by bringing this topic up, I can tell that some of you are terrified. Is he going to tell us that we have to go out and start preaching to others? What does it mean? Because that's what, when we first hear that word, that we are to go and make disciples, the first thing that comes to mind is that we have to go out with our little tracks. We have to grab hold of people. We have to ask them the traditional questions. You know, it might be in different forms, but are you saved? Do you know Jesus as your Savior and Lord? And if they can't, you know, or the, the classic one I just love is, if you died right now, do you know that you'd go to heaven? And then, of course, if they say, I don't know what you're talking about, or I don't understand, then, then we lay on the four spiritual laws. We have to get our little pant, and, we, and then we have to pray the sinner's prayer. And if we do everything just right, then we'll make a disciple of him. We'll bring them into the fold. Now, if that doesn't scare the bejeevers out of you, it certainly does of me. 
because that isn't me at all. It is some people. Some people can do that. And among those who can do it, some can actually do it well. <laughs> and we've probably met some of those who don't do it so well. But that's in our mind. Is that what Jesus is telling us to do? Jesus says we've got to go out and, and grab people. and, 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 and some, it's, it's our job to do that? Well, I'm not disparaging that. I'm not saying that that's not proper for some people who have the gift. The gift of what we might call evangelism. But I would suggest that there are other ways and that the vast majority of us are not equipped or even called to that kind of evangelism. So there's three things I'd like to say about what it means to make disciples. First of all, there are as many ways to do it as there are people because God has given us all a variety of gifts and talents. The question is how we use the gifts that God has given to us in order to make disciples. And if you have the gift to preach, then go and preach. But very few people have that gift. Most of us have to find other means and other ways of sharing the gospel. And I'll share that in just a few moments. But the first thing we need to understand is that there are a variety of ways of sharing the faith. The second thing that I want to emphasize, and I think this is very important, is that we're not alone in this task. Jesus did not say, Peter, you must go. He didn't say, Andrew, you must go. He said, all of you must go. We go together. It's not like I have to go out and save the world. We are the church. We are the people of God. And as a community, we're responsible for going and making disciples. And that's good news. We don't have to do it alone. We don't have to do it by ourselves. We go together as a community. Jesus said to the church, go. Go forth and make disciples. Go together. We have a responsibility as the church, not as individuals, but together we're called to go forth. So we're called to go forth using the gifts that we have. We're called to go forth as a community. And here's what I want to emphasize today. That we do just as well preaching the gospel by the way we live our lives as we do by speaking the gospel. You've probably heard the saying, go and preach the good news and if necessary, use words. Here's what I want to emphasize today when we talk about going and making disciples. That just as important as the words that we use is the life that we live. Our greatest witness and our greatest instrument in making disciples is how we live out our Christian life. The faith that we have in our hearts, how we live that out in the world. I just need to pause right now for a moment. Can we just be in a spirit of prayer? So, as we go to make disciples, what I was trying to emphasize is that the most important thing isn't the words that we speak. It's how we live our life it's how we live who Jesus Christ is to us. What people see in us. What they see within us. Let me take you back a few years. To those formative years in your life the years that your faith was formed and made you who you are today. I think back to the days that I grew up in the church where I was blessed to be. And the greatest messages that I received. Now this is kind of embarrassing to say, but in, what, 18 years of going to that church, 
I don't remember hardly one sermon that was ever preached. I hate to say this, but I dare say that most of you will never remember more than maybe one thing I've ever said in the 20 years I've been here. You might remember it for a week, but if you look back, I don't, you know, I don't remember what the pastor preached on. I don't remember the Sunday school lessons, a few of them I can remember, but I don't remember them. You know what I remember and what really had an impact on my faith development? Were the witnesses of the people. Their faith lived out in their lives. It was the faith of Sunday school teachers who maybe weren't the best teachers but faithfully taught year after year in spite of all the you know what we gave to them. It was the people who sat around us every Sunday faithfully in church. The witness that they made in my life had more of an impact than anything anybody ever said to me, than any book that I ever read. It's not to say that the preaching, it's not to say that the words in Sunday school didn't have an impact, but far more important were the impact of the lives of those around me. People who I saw their faith being lived out on a daily basis. You know, a person can preach all they want. I can get up and, 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 and try to let people know that I'm a great, fine Christian. I can, um, I can talk to people all I want about the fact that I go to church every Sunday, and I can, I can put bumper stickers on my car that say things like, in case of rapture, this car will be unmanned, and I can uh, hang a cross on my, my mirror, and I can wear a Jesus t-shirt, and I can do all of those things that some people think are great ways to witness, and maybe they are. But all it takes is for me to make a disparaging remark about someone else, to tell an off-color joke, or make a racist comment, and everything that I have preached goes down the drain. Now, it may sound unfair. We know in the church that we're all sinners, and we all make mistakes, and we're all going to we're all going to fail at times. And we're here today to comfort each other in that knowledge and to support each other and pray for each other. Here's the unfair thing about it. When we go out into the world, the world doesn't know that. The world knows that we profess to be Christians. And when we mess up, guess what? The first thing they look at is say, well, look at those Christians. What a bunch of hypocrites. Now that's unfair that we have to go out there and we have to try to be better than what we know we really are. But the fact is that out there the world is judging us. And the world is judging Jesus by the way we live our lives. And one little slip up. A church can be doing such fantastic things. A church can be feeding the hungry. They can be opening their doors to the homeless. They can be reaching out in missions and doing all kinds of wonderful things. And you know what happens when the pastor gets caught in some indiscretion? You know what the media immediately latches onto? It's not all the good things the church is doing. It's the one negative thing. So what I'm trying to say is that when we go out into the world... We make disciples, not so much by the words we speak, but by the life we live. Are we showing the world that Jesus Christ has made a difference in our lives? And yes, we will fail. And thankfully, God will forgive us. But we have a tremendous responsibility. Tremendous responsibility to be a faithful witness to Jesus Christ. Not so much to ourselves, but to the world. Now, where is the world? Where is that world that we're called to? Jesus said, go into all the world. Well, the world is that place that God has called us to. Now, we're called to go overseas. Maybe not so much in our own bodies, but we send financial gifts to missions around the world. We support missions. 
We go out on short-term mission activities. There are many ways that we can reach out to the world beyond our own community. But by and large, the world that we find ourselves in is the world that we're in right here. And we become a witness to that world where God has placed us. And it's amazing, as we reach out, what can happen. Now I'm going to use a very specific example here. And it's going to end with a challenge to you today. But um, I received a challenge from our bishop this past week. Every year we take up a love offering. During the month of May, and we take that to annual conference, this year, your lay delegate will be Luann Tashan, and she and I will be taking the love offering with us. But our bishop has added to that another challenge this year. He is challenging our annual conference. I'll get the wording down. It says, I write today to invite you to join me in making the 2013 love offering a truly extravagant expression of the kingdom's economy by assembling and collecting 5,000 cleaning buckets to add to our regular love offering. That means that every one of our 356 congregations in Minnesota must commit to making at least 14 cleaning buckets. Now what in the world is a cleaning bucket? Well, I won't give you all the instructions here. But we have, as a church, put together many, many tens probably hundreds of thousands of cleaning buckets over the years. And these are made available at our emergency um, warehouses, one in Chicago and one in Louisiana, that when there is a disaster someplace, when our disaster teams go in, they take many different kinds of supplies with them. And one of them, they take these cleaning buckets, which people can use to help clean their homes after a flood or whatever other disaster. And we've been told that after hurricane, the church is making disciples every time it reaches out in the love of Christ to touch the lives of other people. We may not see that. We may not understand that completely when we give our offerings here to support the U-Zone. But people in town recognize what we're doing. They see that we care. When we collect monies to send to other people around the world in need. Even though we may not be there to see them receive the help that they need, they realize that this is coming. This help is coming out of the love of Jesus Christ. When we make our 14 cleaning buckets, and yes, I responded and told the bishop that we would accept the challenge and we would prepare at least 14 cleaning buckets. And if I know Luann, she's going to make us put together a lot more than that. They're not cheap, and uh, there's an awful lot that goes into those five-gallon buckets, but we're going to do it. We may not understand completely the fact that we are reaching out to the world in the love of Christ, but somewhere down the line, those buckets are going to reach somebody, and someone's going to know that the church cares for them. They may be Roman Catholic, they may be Jewish, they may be Muslim, they may be atheist. But they're going to receive that bucket from the United Methodist Church. They're going to receive aid from the United Methodist Church as a sign of God's love for them. And to me, that's the most important thing that we can be about in making disciples, in reaching out, being the love of Christ to the world. It's as important, if not more important, than any word that we can ever speak. Yes, there may be times when we need to speak up. But the most important thing is that on a daily basis, in the world in which God has called you, that we live out the love of Jesus Christ. That we be his witness. That we allow people to see Christ in us. And that ultimately, in my mind, will have the greatest impact on making disciples in the world to which God has called us. Let's pray. Lord.